Learning a new engine can be a daunting task. What about learning one in just two weeks? I've learned Godot in two weeks and I want to share my experience. Learn the strategy that I use that will supercharge your learning experience. I'm Adrian and welcome to Redefine. But first, a small disclaimer, before hitting the dislike button two times and the like button three times, I want to tell you that I've been using Unity and Unreal and created some projects with it. So I'm familiar with game engines and I'm also familiar with programming. But does this mean that this strategy won't apply to you even if you're just starting out? No, on the contrary, this is going to help you. You can take this and apply to your own learning process. Let's get started. The first step is to get accustomed to the engine. So luckily, Godot team provides us with a Unity to Godot switch. If that's the case, if not, you can just start with the starting point in the documentation. If you're coming from Unity, you can go directly to Unity to Godot guide. But after this point, you will get a familiarity with the engine and you won't be new to the engine anymore. It will speed up your learning process. After this step, I skimmed through all the documentation and looked for particularities of the engine. Every engine has its own particularities. In case of Godot, is the node-based system instead of scenes and prefabs like in Unity. Now we have just scenes that are everything, so that's one thing. But of course, some nodes have special functions and we can use a lot of programming languages and scripting languages. And there are a lot of particularities that we can get familiar with just by looking at the documentation provided for that engine. But in this documentation, there is something much more special than this. There are two tutorials. Let's see what they're all about. So I started with a 2D game tutorial and I jumped right into it and instead of just copy pasting the code, I tried to write it myself, all of it, to understand the flow of the engine, how the engine's inner workings and how you can actually make a game with this engine. Of course, the 2D tutorial was simple and I quickly moved to the 3D one, which had a lot of steps and it took me some time to finish. But after finishing it, I've learned a lot about how to make a 2D game in Godot and how to make a 3D game in Godot. After finishing the tutorials, I thought for myself, now I can try to make my own game without any exterior help or like without exterior guidance. Of course, I'm not gonna make a new MMO or something big. I need to make a small game that can help me better understand the engine and see where are the roadblocks that I'm gonna hit because I'm gonna hit and I chose for this particular game a top-down 3d space shooter this is a common type of game but it allows us for different functionalities like player movement enemy movement projectile creation and other things that we're gonna see along the way so I got started with the player movement and it turned out quite fine of course it's quite different from Unity, but with uh, Google's help, I managed to fix it quite nicely. Then I proceeded with making the enemies, because it's not fun if the player is all alone. The enemies were another scene. Also, static enemies are not fun as well, so I needed something to move the enemies. And this is where I found Godot's path node. And the path node is something that allows us to move objects along a predefined path. In case of a top-down space shooter, this is really cool, because you can use this paths to predefine some trajectories for the enemies that we can spawn them in sequences uh, that will make the game much more fun in the end. Okay, so with that said, I did this and the enemies turned out quite fine, but now I needed to kill them and to shoot projectiles. So the next step was instantiating projectiles, moving projectiles, and of course making sure that the physics of the enemies collide with the projectiles to be able to hit them. I also added physics to the player so that the enemies can collide with the player. The last step to this, I had to make the game more fun. To make the game more fun is basically you need to add some feedback to players interactions. For example, if the enemy gets hit, now the enemy blinks. Or if the player gets hit, the player blinks. If the enemy dies, we spawn a particle system that would emulate an explosion so that the player knows that that enemy died. So I proceeded in doing this and I learned a lot about materials, about how to animate them, I learned how to create particle systems and much more. So you see, by just using a simple game, I learned a lot uh, over the course of just two weeks. Can you apply this strategy for yourself? Of course you can. You just know where to look for stuff. But of course the documentation is there to help you, so you can just go for that because it's much more easier than just going to YouTube and searching for random tutorials because they solve particular problems. Lastly, I'm gonna tell you a secret that will supercharge your learning process overall. There is this principle discovered by Pareto, 
which is 80-20, uh, which means that we have um, learning 20% of the stuff will yield you 80% of the results and the rest 80% will yield you 20% of results. So basically most of the stuff, either learning an engine or learning a new language, you can learn it quite fast, but then you'll get diminishing rewards as you try to go advanced and super advanced. But the thing is, you don't have to go super advanced, even not advanced. You can make a lot of games. I mean, for example, I made the space shooter quite fast without actually learning so much stuff. So for the most types of games, you don't need to be super expert into learning them. So make sure that you use this strategy in your next learning process. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adrian and see you in the next one.